Have you ever been bullied? Do you know anyone who's been bullied? Have you ever bullied someone? When we were younger, we looked a lot different. When I was in sixth grade, I was diagnosed with spondylolysis, which basically means that I fractured my spine. I had to wear a three-inch thick plastic brace from front to back, and I had to wear that 23 hours every single day. Couldn't play piano, couldn't even walk. Because I couldn't move, and because of the side effects from the multiple painkillers I was taking, I started to gain a lot of weight. And because I couldn't do anything, the only thing that would make me feel better was eating. And I ate a lot. Pizza, donuts, ice cream. I was huge. Fast forward three months later, Brace comes off, ready to go back to school. I'm expecting to hear, Martina, oh my gosh, how are you? I miss you so much. Let's make plans on Friday. And Martina, are you okay? Instead I heard, Martina, hey. <laughs> Whoa, are you pregnant? <laughs> Kids called me pregnant, fat, and disgusting. They wouldn't even want to be around me or associated with me because they didn't want to be with the fat kid. Any self-confidence that I had was gone. And I felt like I had no friends except for my family. While Martina was at home, I used to go to school and I would come home. I would watch her cry herself to sleep every single night. I watched as her body image, as all of her confidence was completely destroyed and she was in so much pain. But at school, kids thought she was faking it. She didn't want to go to school that day. She just wanted more attention. They had no clue. When I was a lot younger, I had a speech impediment and it was really hard for me to pronounce certain words. Now my parents would be the first to tell you I cannot stop talking. <laughs> but when I was a lot younger, that was a huge problem for me. The struggle to communicate with people made me feel as though my ideas and what I had to say wasn't worth saying. And I got really insecure about myself. When I was in sixth grade, kids called me weird, psycho, creepy, awkward, you name it. One day, after school, I'd been bullied particularly bad, and I got home, and I was just, I was beyond upset. And I kind of just thought to myself, okay, you can continue to be insecure, continue to be upset and feel this way, but you can do something to make yourself feel better. Martina and I, at that point, we'd been playing piano for many years, and we loved writing songs together as a hobby. Today, we did the exact same thing, and we wrote Make Me Happy. Make Me Happy is all about empowering yourself to be the gatekeeper of every positive and negative thing coming your way, and to say, okay, no, no, no. You do not get to make me happy. It does not take you to make me happy. It takes me. It was black or white. It was never all right. That's what you told me in total control. I learned to see with only one eye, far from living in total control. They don't understand, they don't understand about me. They don't even know how to make me happy. All they ever do is think about themselves. Well, I'm breaking out of my shell. I got places to go and people to meet. Never, ever, ever again will you ever tell me it takes you to make me happy, la-da-da-da-da. Whoa, you don't get to make me happy, la-da-da-da-da. Whoa, you don't get to make me happy. Oh. <laughs> Thank <Thanks. you. laughs> When we wrote that song, we didn't think anything was going to happen. We still had two more months of sixth grade to get through, and that was that until the summer. 
During that summer before seventh grade, we went to a really cool songwriting camp. And basically what you did was everyone at the camp wrote a song together and you would go to a studio and get it recorded. One and done. We brought our song Make Me Happy in and the kids liked it so much that they wanted to record that one too. So we went, we recorded it, and we didn't think anything of it again. Until two weeks later when Steve Wagner of Delmark Records called my mom and said, did your girls really write that song? Yeah, they did. Well, I don't ever do this. They're totally out of my genre. But I love your girls, the song, and the message so much. I want to give you guys a record deal. Oh, my gosh. That'd be amazing. We were so excited. It was so cool to think that when we'd been bullied and feeling so terrible about ourselves, an unfortunate, ordinary situation so many people go through, we were able to do something we love to make ourselves feel better and start a music career. So when the start of seventh grade rolled around and kids asked us what we did that summer, we just said, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Little did they know, Make Me Happy was about to come out to the whole world. So Make Me Happy comes out and we get a ton of publicity. Everyone came together to help spread our ideas. Especially on one interview where a blind DJ from Waukesha, Wisconsin heard us and messaged us on Facebook saying, Hi girls, I love your song and I love your message. Would you please come up to Waukesha and meet my kids? Oh my gosh, of course. So we went to meet his kids and it was an entire school. Not only did we perform for the entire school, but we also led five 70 minute breakout sessions with those sixth graders talking about anti-bullying, self-esteem, and finding what you love and using it to get through a tough time. We also started performing a lot in Waukesha. Waukesha is the birthplace of Les Paul, a pioneer in the making of electric guitars. So it's kind of like a mini Nashville. There are tons of places to play, and we played almost every place we could. As we started performing more and more, we realized we loved what we were doing and we wanted to start a music career. But we were 13. We had no clue what we were doing. So rather than wait for someone else to tell us, we, including our parents, decided to do it by ourselves. Writing more songs, collaborating with amazing artists, producing and arranging music, and putting our songs all over the internet so that the whole world could hear them because that's what we want to do. As our gigs started getting bigger and better and we played more. And we built our career from the ground up, we started getting some amazing opportunities. In fact, NoBully.org invited us to play at their Broadway Against Bullying benefit at 54 Below in New York, a really famous club. We were also invited in to that club in San Francisco and New York and it was so cool. It was a huge step up from Waukesha. <laughs> <laughs> But it was really fun, and that actually gave us a cool idea. We wanted to go to New York. We wanted to play. We wanted to make connections. We wanted to get our names out there. So we begged our parents, and then we begged them again, and begged them again, and finally they said yes, and we drove up to New York, and we were so excited, and we got out of the car, and we saw these big, giant skyscrapers, and everyone walking around like they knew exactly where they were going. Where were we going to go? I even remember. It was a gorgeous day out. It was sunny. It was Saturday. It was June in New York. We step out on the street, ready to go, and my dad asks us, all right, guys, what do you want to do? You're here. We can relax. We can sightsee. We can walk around a little bit. Just get used to it. What do you want to do? We wanted to play. So we took to the Internet, and we searched up every single open mic in New York. We started in Greenwich Village. Greenwich Village is really cool because it has places that people like Bob Dylan, Lady Gaga, and Neil Diamond started their careers in. When we played at these places that people like them have played at, you could feel the history and the energy. It's almost like a buzz of all of this talent. It, it, was, it was really cool. It was really cool. And <laughs> as we started playing these open mics, Every single place we played at wanted us back for our own set and our own show. Soon after, we were booking our own shows all over Manhattan. And we were booking them just about every single night. We also recorded our debut EP in New York, and it was so cool. It was so much fun. 
and we realized that this is what we want to do for the rest of our lives. So here we are. We are still taking risks in our career every single day. We have no clue what the future is going to hold. We're just beginning. When we were bullied, we went to something we loved to make us feel better about the situation, about ourselves, and that inspired a series of kinetic reactions that inspired a music career. So what do you love? What do you really want to do? It only takes one spark of imagination to find it and do it, and do it every single day. And when you do it to turn an ordinary situation into something a little bit better, to make any day a little bit better, it's like throwing darts at a dartboard. You're going to throw 10 million and something is going to stick. And you just might wake up and realize you're following your dreams. We were so inspired by this TEDx talk, we decided to write a song with Daniel Simmons, and it's all about recognizing everyone has their opinions. They're going to say what they want to say, but we're going to think what we want, and that's what's most important. It's called Think What I Want. People have a habit of just talking, saying that they know what's best for me. They say that I only got one option That I need to wake up from my dreams You can try to change me But you'll never phase me Baby, there's no maybe in my heart You can say I'm stupid That I'll never do it Go ahead and prove it if you're so smart I'ma think what I want, I'ma think what I want, ooh-oh. I'ma be what I want, I'ma be what I want, ooh-oh. Your words all sounding the same, your words ain't making me change. So you can say what you want, cause I'ma think what I want. I'ma think what I want, I'ma think what I want, ooh-oh. I'ma be what I want, yeah, I'ma be what I want, ooh-oh. Making me change So you can say what you want Cause I'ma think what I want So we want you guys to stand up Come on, everyone stand up Let's go And let's start clapping, come on Two Okay, so the lyrics are really simple It's I'ma think what I want I'ma think what I want I'ma be what I want I'ma be what I want You guys ready? Let's go I'ma think what I want Yeah, I'ma think what I want I'ma be what I want, yeah, I'ma be what I want, ooh, whoa. Your words all sounding the same, your words ain't making me change. So you could say what you want, cause I'ma think what I want. One more. Oh, okay. I'ma think what I want, great. I'ma think what I want, ooh, whoa. I'ma be what I want, yeah, I'ma be what I want, ooh, whoa. Your words all sounding the same, your words ain't making me change. Say what you want, cause I'ma think what I want. Thank you guys. Thank so you so much. much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>